We don't usually see mid-range CPUs outperforming the flagship ones, but if a CPU does that, it becomes the heavy favorite of the PC community. While the current generation of GPUs is definitely stronger than the previous one, we all know how unattractive their pricing is. This is however not the case with the CPUs, particularly the mobile CPUs that are getting launched these days. If you remember one of my previous videos on the latest Intel and AMD mobile processors, you might already know that the Ryzen 7000 and the Raptor Lake mobile CPUs are far ahead of the previous generations. If you haven't watched that video, you will find it in the description. Make sure you also subscribe if you don't want to miss the latest PC hardware related stuff I upload regularly. Coming back to the topic, this time we don't even need the current gen flagship CPUs to beat the older ones as mid-range CPUs are already doing it without breaking a sweat. The mid-range Ryzen 7 7745HX 7, was recently benchmarked on Cinebench R23 and a pic was shared on Bilibili forum by a user named Golden Pig. The CPU scored a good 1828 points in single core and a whopping 18606 points in the multi core test, which is really high compared to the 6000 mobile CPUs. For reference, it is 15% faster in single core and 34% faster in multi core compared to the 6900HX, which was one of the fastest flagship CPUs from the last gen. Now, even though the number of cores and threads is equal, this is probably the first time we are seeing a mid range laptop CPU scoring almost equal to its desktop counterpart which here is the Ryzen 7700. Now one might say that the 7745HX is more power hungry with an average TDP of 95 watts as told by the user, the scores achieved by 6900HX were even on a higher average TDP of 110 watts. This makes the 7745HX not only faster than the 6900HX but also more power efficient. The only thing that can now outperform this CPU should be one of the i7s from the latest Raptor Lake CPUs which are yet to be launched, but I do believe that it won't be that hard for Intel to achieve a better score compared to the 7745HX as it easily broke the record of the 7845HX with its flagship i9 mobile CPUs. Now one thing I am disappointed about current laptops is that even though we have been getting huge performance uplifts recently, this is not true with the laptop graphics cards. While both Nvidia and AMD are achieving some decent performance gains with the RTX 40 and RX 7000 GPUs, the recent RTX 4070 laptop benchmark is a little bit disappointing. The RTX 4060 was seen doing fine as it consistently delivered the performance between a desktop RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti, but the laptop RTX 4070 is not that far away from the 4060. WCC FTX writer Hassan Mujtaba recently shared a screenshot of the performance comparison between the laptop RTX 4060 and 4070 to the previous gen, which shows that the 4070 is just 11 to 15 percent faster than the 3070 in 3D Mark tests. Now I know that 3D Mark is not equivalent. To gaming but, but still gives us a good idea on how a GP will perform in video games. This means that if this performance uplift is similar in gaming, then the RTX 4070 laptops will provide significantly inferior value because the 3070 laptops can be found for as low as $1200 but the 4070 laptops will cost at least $1800 to $2000. This means that for 50% more price, you are getting just 15% better gaming performance. Now the rest is up to the users who may prefer a 4070 laptop due to a faster processor but if that's the case, then a 4060 laptop with an i9 should be a better choice because it will still provide a decent 1080p gaming performance that is comparable to the laptop RTX 3070 Ti and will also cost less. Lastly, if you are someone who needs a lot of fast storage drives but don't have enough slots for adding several NVMe SSDs, then ASRock just launched a brand new blazing quad M.2 card that supports up to 4 NVMe SSDs. It's not the first time we are getting an AIC with 4 SSD support but what is special about this AIC is that it comes with a PCIe Gen 5 support which means that if you own a motherboard with PCIe Gen 5 interface, you can have double the bandwidth compared to the PCIe Gen 4 slot. The Blazing Quad M.2 card is designed in such a way that each M.2 slot is placed at a 45 degree angle which keeps the signal traces short and provides better signal integrity. As each SSD is given 4 PCI lane support, they are going to enjoy the full bandwidth of up to 16 gigabytes per second each. 
Even though we don't have such high speed SSDs currently, this quad card is definitely going to support faster SSDs in the future. As AICs like these run very hot, ASRock has equipped it with dual aluminum fans that will keep the SSDs cooler and on top of that it comes with a 6 pin PCIe connector as 75 watts from the PCI slot won't be enough to power all the SSDs. All of this combined, the AIC doesn't look any different from a low profile GPU so imagine what a rig would look like if you install 5 of these on a W790 WS motherboard that was launched alongside this Quad M.2 card. Currently the pricing and availability of this AIC are not known but the report suggests that it won't be available worldwide. Let me know what do you think about this card in the comments. Also share your thoughts on the 7745HX and the RTX 4070 being slower than expected. Subscribe for more videos like this and turn on the notifications to get notified each time I upload a video. You can also follow me on Twitter, the link is given in the description and I will see you next time.